Hi, I'm John Dobson and this is my help with Rock School Technical Exercises Grade 3 Tutorial. So, let's just start with a bar chord exercise. Um, if you're not very familiar with bar chords, then this might be a good place to start. If you are, then you probably want to skip out the first um, minute of this video, this part of the video. Anyway, so what I always say to people to understand how to play bar chords is first of all, you would take, in, in this example, in this grade three example, we've got to deal with an E major, an E minor, and an A minor shape. Those shape chords that will be moved up and down the neck, sorry, there's A major as well, that will be moved up and down the neck to create bar chords. Right, so we've got major and minor, root six, that means the lowest notes on the sixth string, and the lowest notes on the fifth string, root five for the A minor and A shapes, root six for the E and the E minor shapes. So, however, this is the best way to do it, I think. Imagine someone has chopped your index finger off, but you still got to play that E chord, okay? So this is how you do it. And the E minor, and the A minor, and the A. Or, possibly, for the A. But it's important if you're going to do that to stop the first string ringing. So what I do, I tell my students to do, is to put your pinky, if you're right hand, on the first string. So when you play that A of the bar, just one bar like that, you don't get a sixth by going too far with your pick. Cut it off the first string, because that would be the wrong chord. Okay. Back to the bar chord. So you take that E shape without using your first finger, you move it up the neck, you bar across the third string. Now, if you're struggling with bar chords, I've got a video that's in my channel, Help With Bar Chords. Right, so, first string across there, and you've got a G chord. That is the first one that you've got to play in the bar chord exercise. Move up two frets, take your second finger away, and you've created an A minor. Okay, now we move up two more, move across, make the A minor shape. So it's a root five bar chord now. Just play those five strings, not the sixth string. You got your E minor. Then you move everything up, still on the seventh fret, take your second finger off, and you've got a B minor chord. Okay, now this is where the problems start for other people. So, as mentioned earlier, the, a, the major shape, the A major shape you like, but I'm doing it on the third fret so it becomes a C. You can do it with two fingers, your first finger on the third fret and your third finger across um, the fifth fret of strings two, three, and four. And again, you know, use your pinky on the first string so it stops you going too far with your pick. Up two. And then you're back to your G that we started with. Now, some of you may not like that and you might want to try the alternative way of playing the A but for a lot of people with small of hands you've got a big stretch between one and two to do this so you're doing the A chord with the three fingers like that the advantage of course is that your pinky will actually naturally stop the first string from ringing because it'll touch it up to put the D and you're back to your G chord and that's how you do the bar chord exercise Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the arpeggios. And you know, if you're going to do the video exam, you're going to get G minor, sorry, G major or B minor. And that's what you play. Otherwise, if you did the exam and you go to a centre or whatever or something, um, you would have to do a random G, A or B. You don't know which one you're going to get. Third fret for G, fifth for A, seventh for B. Anyway, so let's just start with the G major. So I always tell my students to start by playing a three note power chord. Okay, that gives us the root, the fifth, and the octave of the root again. Or if you like, one, five, one. So it will be written as a five chord, G5. Three note power chord, right. Now from there, we need to add one extra note and it's the third note of the G scale, which is a B. Okay, so that means that instead of jumping down with your first finger like that, it's best to put a two on the G there, on the third fret sixth string, play that extra note there, and jump up to your power chord shape, and 
you've got a G major arpeggio. The other one they want in the book, of course, is B minor. So now I'm on the seventh fret. If anything, it's easier. Start of a B power chord. And you need the minor third, and the minor third is on the tenth fret of the sixth string. So, in fingers, one, four, three, and then four again, because it's a power chord shape. That's the best way to do it. Anyway, so there you go. That's your arpeggios. So, moving on to the scales. Now, I've not used the metronome yet. I'm going to use a metronome. I'm going to do it just at the end of it, just for the sake of demonstration. Play the metronome, okay? So, if you go, he's not playing the metronome yet. Don't worry about it. It's coming up. So, we know that the scales, you're going to play in this order. You're going to go, the first one will be on G, then A, then B. Then you go back down. Logical. And I think, I'm pretty sure the order is major, natural minor, minor pentatonic, major pentatonic, and then finally the blue scale on G. Right, so that's what you've got in the book. To play the major scale, you need to remember this finger pattern. Now, um, because I'm sort of one fret higher than what the number would be, it might be slightly confusing. So what I'm actually gonna move this knot out of the shot, okay? So I'm on the third fret, and my finger pattern is not the fret, my finger pattern. One finger on each fret, one finger per fret rule. That's what we're gonna do. Two, four. One, two, four. Okay, now this is how I teach my students to do this. Do the same thing from strings two to one. Two, four, one, two, four. But we don't need that. That note there, that's an A. We're not playing an A as part of the G major scale. We're going to stop on the third fret. So it's the same from six to five as it is from two to one, but you don't play the pinky at the end. The bit in the middle, one, three, four, twice. So practice going one, three, four on the middle strings. You put that all together and you've got a major pattern. Now you don't have to memorize them in the book. You could just write the, the finger numbers above the notes you know, have a pencil or whatever, and you get it. But I strongly advise you to memorise these scales because you're going to use them a lot if you're going to move on. Anyway, so we go two, four. One, two, four. One, three, four. We do that again. We're back to two, four. One, two. But we don't go four because we're going to come straight back down from there. And there you have it. That is your G major scale. Right, now the A minor is more controversial. Lots of people have got different way of playing this. And there might be some people that get a bit knocked about my way of playing this. But I think this is the most effective way of doing it. You might want to jump down, but I like to use my pinky to up to move down. I'm going to explain that now. So the most complicated scale you're going to have to play for grade three is the A natural minor. So you go one, three, four, and you repeat one, three, four. So far, so good. Now the next bit, I go one, and now what I'm gonna do is my move my pinky down so it's one fret lower than it would naturally want to be. So my pinky's playing the seventh fret now. Brings us down to the fourth fret. I've moved down a position. But what I do now is I move immediately back up to the fifth position. Three, one, two, four, one. Move down with your first finger, put your pinky where it naturally got on the seventh. Scrunch up slightly so you bring you back to fifth position. Now a lot of people prefer to stay in position and jump down. But I don't like that. But that's just a personal preference thing. Right, we're moving up to B minor pentatonic. Now, if you don't know minor pentatonic pattern at this stage, then you really need to learn it very, very quickly because it's the most useful scale that you have in rock guitar. So, get this under your fingers. One, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one. Now, just imagine, ignore the first string for a minute. What you've got, one, four on six, one, four on two, and night sandwiches, sandwich, outside of three lots of one, three. That's a really easy way of remembering the minor pentatonic. Now the blue scale, no, sorry, it's major pentatonic next because it goes back down. Now, um, 
I've taught people, this is the one with the most likely, the one the hardest to remember. But again, let's just point out, you don't have to memorise them. You're unlikely to play a major pentatonic with this actual um, pattern. You're much better off actually using a minor pentatonic and using on, and starting on the second note. But I think they want them, you to do it in the right position, so we better do it that way. So you start with your second finger on the fifth fret and you go two, four, one, four, one, four, one, three, two, four, two. So two, four, one, four, one, four, one, three, two, four, two. You know, memorize it like a phone number if you want to memorize the scale that is. I hope you do. Anyway, next. We move on to the G blue scale. It is a minor pentatonic with an extra note on each octave. So on the first octave, that means you'll be putting a two on there. And on the next octave, you'll be putting a pinky there. So you're now left with this. Here's your mind. I'll tell you when you've got your blues note rather than your minor pentatonic. So you're playing a minor pentatonic on G with the extra notes there to make the blue scale. And the extra note there to make the blue scale. Okay, and there you have it. That's your blue scale. Now you've got probably the easiest part of the technical exercises. And they, these are the seventh chords, which is at the bottom of the second page. Um, A7, first of all. I like to use two and three because it's easy to change the D7 and E7 that way. You, you might, most people, a lot of people use one and two. Okay, it doesn't really matter what finger you use, but that's fine. So you play the chord, you pick out the notes individually to prove that you've fretted, fretted that chord nice and um, accurately. Now, after that, I think it's C7 next, and you have. This time, so that, and remember A7 is a root 5 chord, so whatever you do, don't play the 6th string. And the same with C, it's a root 5, there's your root. So, C with the pinky on the 3rd fret of the 3rd string, just in case you don't know. And you get a C7. Pick out the notes afterwards. And that leaves us with two more, forgive me if it's not quite the right order, but we have D7, which is a root 4. So don't play the 5th string or the 6th string. Pick up the notes. And finally, um, a nice simple voicing of E7. So you make an E chord, take your ring finger off, and you've got an E7. Because you've taken a root down two frets to flat and 7th. That's how it becomes. An E7, pick out all the notes. Right. So you have it. So I've got a match and I'm clicking around my phone then on. You've got to play your scales at 90 beats a minute. Now, obviously, if you don't know them very well, slow it down, gradually bring the speed up. This is what the speed they eventually want. So we're looking for making sure there's a nice smooth change between the notes. You don't play them short like that. Keep it smooth. And try and keep an even volume between every note. It's only grade three, they probably won't be that fussy with it. Then you're on to A natural minor. Move down, back up. That's my method anyway. B minor pentatonic. It'd be very embarrassing if I got this one wrong. Job. A major pentatonic. Finally, G blues. That's all your scales played with a metronome.